Hello there everyone, this is Mark 3 and welcome back to Transport Tycoon. Or not. Welcome back to Mashinki. Yes, that's what I meant to say, of course. Welcome back to um, Jan Zeleny's Mashinki. It's been a year or so since this last appeared on the channel. But, um, well, this is a slightly different series from last time. Because this is actually a companion series. Um, Damodoc started doing a series of Mashiki on his channel. And I thought, you know what? He showed all the seeds and map settings and stuff. Which is what I've got up on here. So I thought, why not ask him if he's okay. And do a play along. Just to see how we would both approach the map differently. If we're on the same map. Then it comes down to our individual play styles, doesn't it? And he seemed okay with that. So here we are. Um, you can find links to his videos in the description down below in his channel. And we'll see what happens. I mean, um, I remember when I was last playing Machinki, it was more like a, a chill out kind of game at that time. But this time I'll be going in like, um, as I have been of late, I'll be trying to. I'll be trying to I'll be jump, jump cutting where needed and compressing things where I can and so I don't know how long these episodes will be but I'm going to shoot for half an hour like I usually do even though I'm not very good at that. Uh, things of note are uh, this is actually a 512 map I've not actually played on this map of this size for a long time I normally go for the map that's four times larger. Uh, I hit space immediately to try and pause. Anyway let's go ahead and we name my player all in heavy metal was that what Damon did I need to scroll back slightly on his oh he had an apostrophe in it whoops <laughs> I'm Mark Threes all in I forgot I forgot the apostrophe there right Okay, change my portrait. Very suave, very suave. Also, my name is slightly put too long, apparently. And I also did the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. I'm off to a great start, aren't I? There we go. Hmm. No. It's giving me a lot of girls for some reason. Come on, come on, give me something. I'm not finding anything close to me, so, you know what, Mr. Serious here is going to be my thing. Okay. I'm Mark Freeze, all in heavy metal. This is, this is it. All in heavy metal. Okay, so, as I said, the entire purpose of this is just comparing how we would play. I think, uh, let's go for a nice tur sage, turquoise, what did Dammer take? I need, some, I need different from what Dammer took. He's gone with dark green. Let's go with turquoise, okay. Sure, let's, that's it, that's it, we're set. And if I zoom out, 11 and 16. Ooh, hang on, there's slight differences, it looks like. There's 13 and 16 up there for Dammer. Mm. Oh, this is a shame. This is a shame, it's not actually an identical map. Um, 11, 11, 11, sorry, 12, 16. Town differences are slightly higher. Industry locations are different. Looks like it's the same map apart from that though. So yeah. Town, towns are in the same places, industries are different places. Looks like it's the same map generation apart from that. So apparently there is something randomised there beyond what goes on. So, ooh. okay, let's get it started then. I like to survey my map. Big cluster of towns and things up that way. These two towns are off by themselves, which is slightly unfortunate. But I want to see where I go. So this is like um, also covering my thought process as I start. Ideally, I want a long, multi-purpose route, and it looks like this concentration here is a very safe bet. Also, I'm going to max out my load. 
Okay, sorry about that. Um, I maxed out my loan. I'm almost set. I've been looking around. And I think I'm going to concentrate my passenger area around here. 7,000... I know maxing out your money early on is a bit of a risk, but I feel like I can make it work for me pretty well. Um, I've also been surveying the industries, as you can see here, and, and honestly, I've been quite unlucky with my spawn, as far as industries are concerned. I've been looking for specifically sawmills that generate wood tokens, and I've got two that generate, sorry, three that generate one wood token when I deliver. That's unlucky because, um, on average, you maybe get one with um, which can generate two, and sometimes you get one that generates three, so two, they're all generating one at best, that is... Not good, so if I want to secure early wood supply, I need to get into a tool works early off. Um, I also think I'm going to lead out with a line between Kilbride and Hereford. Because that's a decent... well, decent. It's a couple of hundred length, relatively straight, and it'll let me use parts of the track for other things. So, ideally, I want to do a... Gloucester to Livingston route. That's what I prefer, but I don't think I'm quite there yet. So, let's go ahead and get started with all this. Um, Hereford, I really like the shape. That's good. Very good shape. And Kirby is not a very good shape. Mm, it's fine. What I'm doing is looking at the shape with an eye of maybe guiding the growth of the town as, as far as it goes because um, one thing you can do is you can buy land development plots to force a town to take a certain um, approach as it expands also when you ear it up it like um, it plonks in things like post offices kind of at random so it's a bit of a pain in towns you're already working with so it's not the best thing there that's a vertical so I want one Vertical, one, two, one, one, there, one, one here. One, two, three, four. So I want to as far as here. And I'm counting four rather than two because the catchment area is two, right? But I'm also taking into the fact that um, when I put a expansion on this, namely the waiting room, catchment area increases to four tiles instead. So I'm, I'm counting that. I'm also counting the fact I want to put the waiting area here as well. In fact, let's install that right now. So I want to put it like on here so it extends it by one deeper into the town. There we go. Then I'll just do what is eh, honestly become my standard fare in these games. Which is that. That. And... Two, when I get a signal box, maximum station size increases by two, so that's where that's, that'll go. Then I merge it together here. And set it up ready for multiple tracks like that. Same kind of dealio on this side. And that's uh, that's my basic layout for this, like for a, a single transit station like that. I'll do the same thing up here at um, Kerbide, though churches are sometimes a pain because they force you to alter the plan slightly. So this is going to be a vertical oriented station. So let's go ahead with that. Alright, you start to, to join me as I'm laying in track now, starting from the Hereford side of things. And because of the long distance involved, just to be safe, I'd like to try and install a single a single line as best I can. Then if need be, I can decide not to double it up until I get things a bit more secure. Just looking at where things are at the moment. I think a slight detour this way is fine. And then up this way. So yeah, this is just in case. Um, I think I should also probably note that this is a very different approach to how I've played Mashinki in the past. It's always been like a style of consciousness style of approach for Mashinki, is what I've done. So this whole slightly more structured thing is a bit more of a rarity as far as this game goes, but it's also how it's going to be. Um, 
One thing that did prompt me to do this series, though, is Dama has this... Um, well, we both played Tycoon games, right? Back in the day. But Dama... When he approaches this game, he kind of does it in like a loop pattern, I guess you could say. Like, he builds big circle loops and things. While I prefer this more condensed, neater version, which is essentially what a mainline track is, like a condensed loop. And look, I've got 6,000 credits. I can afford to completely fill out this track. Very nice. Mind you, I do have to buy other things with that money, so that is something to keep in mind. Oops. So that, that's why I wanted to do it. I mean, something I've long wanted to do, but never quite managed to do, is a compare and contrast style thing with other people playing the same kind of game. So this is probably one of the few times I've managed to actually get something like that off the ground. And it's in a transportation management game, of all things. <laughs> Not quite what I was expecting, I must admit. Let's keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. There we go. This will be my initial um, route. I tried to make one-way connections between towns of relatively similar size so that the passenger trains do about the same in either direction. I'm going to put, I think, a depot up here. Because this is like a central area that's, well, actually no. If I'm going for a central area, I should probably put it down here, shouldn't I? 15 and 9. I, I hope I remember to turn off single depot rules. I need to double check that real quick. Game. Where do I find that? I'm not sure where that is. Oh, wait, here we go. Um, vehicles, towns. I don't think I'm limited to one depot. Good. Or if, it's, if, or if I am the setting, I can't find it. But yeah, let's put a depot down here then, just in case. This is probably the most complex section I'll do for a little bit. Mainly because I... I've realised, with, especially with these early tracks, it's quite easy to do it to, um, with just straight flat connections, at least until traffic picks up. So let's go with the under-over approach. Which is going to be like that. Really quick, really simple. A couple of bridges. Make sure the stone. And then use that to connect in my actual depot so that the main line isn't disrupted if trains are going to and from. There we go. That's um, all set up. Just <laughs> I hit space to unpause it. Stupid reflex that. But this game does have that on the whole flip camera thing. Uh, just let them start to try and build up some people. Uh, what I've done is I've also gone around and signalled everything, so that's um, why I'm now down to 4,500. I'm just waiting for the stations to actually start picking up some people. There they go, starting to grab to get some people. And I need to get my first trains together, so... It's going to have to be a porter, of course. Coach cars. Slightly overloaded, which slightly reduces maximum speed. Um, Santa... I'm going to refuse that. Go away, please. Thank you. For some reason, it says I have uh, six vehicles. I've only got one of the two it says I've got. But that seems to just be a thing. So I'm just going to give this train some orders. And then I'll start to move them out. I do have the funds to fully populate this line, I think, actually. Let's see. Uh, 91 people. This train takes 90. So, I can do that immediately. There is the whole slightly overweight thing, which has reduced its maximum speed by 1 mile per hour. So it's honestly not significant. But the reason I've done that is because as soon as I upgrade it to the Baldwin, and I've got the wood supply to do that, it, that is actually the ideal number of coaches for the Baldwin without overloading that. So that'll be a swap out as soon as possible to get the faster engine. And, but that, and that's why I was looking for the sawmills. I wanted the better wood supply, but... Wait, what did I add to favourites? Mm, ah, never mind. 
I wanted the clone tool, actually. More to the point, why is this train 2? What happened to train 1? I, I didn't build another train. <laughs> Unless there's some, some something just hanging around in here. No, there isn't. Yeah, weird. But, uh, yeah. Four, maybe five engines should be good. So let's go ahead and actually start getting these guys out. Um, since this is a, actually shorter than usual, I do have plenty of funds still in the bank to go into a wood line immediately. But I'm planning to stop these trains to try and space them more evenly, at least for this initial run. So that means I need to keep an eye on that uh, station down there. And I can buy in extra trains if I need to. Mainly because I do want these guys, guys spaced enough that they're actually getting full cargo loads. Also, I kind of wish that um, it was like Transport Tycoon, as in I had a, a view of what the train's looking at. But that's okay. Go forth, my trains, and do your thing. Actually, yeah, I shouldn't stop that one. Um, 30. Okay, I need to stop the next one until there's 80 people. Train 4. Go ahead and park in there, and then stop. Okay. That said, though, um, about halfway, so one, two, three, f may I think five trains should be no enough for this. At least for quite a while. then we're probably looking at maybe four trains as soon as we upgrade to the next engine. <laughs> Oops. And I accidentally did that. So. Let's back you up. I'll tell you to go to this one. Mm. There, it'll be fine. I'll, I'll let it loose. Just do do your thing, trains. Looks like I may need a couple more, actually. Never mind, I was miscounting. Let's put two more trains on this. Six and seven. And that should be good. Okay, right. Let that do that. Should be pretty decent. I was actually... I didn't actually check that, but I can check the value of the train trips. Um... 324 per trip. That's the advantage of this because price increases for passengers over distance. But you do have to do the initial outlay for the tracks and things as well. Anyway, uh, in, let's get on with what we need to do. So, subsidy. Collect that reward, which is actually a little bit of wood. Not much to do, but is it enough for actually a cafe? No, that's 100. I, I need a decent supply still. Okay, let's see. I want something really close because this doesn't matter for distance at all. There's a forest right there. Into that's not one of the good sawmills. That's a good one of the better sawmills. Still terrible, but still okay. A couple down here, which can feed to that. But um, I've also been slightly unlucky, as in most of the tool works near these good sawmills are up in that top right corner. I think this one. Feeds. I want to avoid doing long tracks, though. So I'm going to hook up this one, I think, as my first priority. Congratulations, Sawmill, near Brighton. You are the one I'm going to install my industry app. At least for the moment. Though your poor return on tokens means I actually need to hook up the, um, the toolworks as a matter of urgency as well. Because quite simply, I can't afford to have um, rely on just the sawmill input for a while. Because it's just, it's not very good. Let's be honest, it's not very good.
just thought I'd stop in and quickly show you this. Um, I'm doing a custom junction there. It's very quick, very simple. Just getting this to turn off without conflicts because I decided to build this as a high throughput station. This sawmill has got um, two stations on it. One for intake, one for output. Usually I just go with one, but th this one I've decided to just say hell with it and design something a bit more elaborate. <laughs> so that's that. I'm going to do something similar to one of these tool places as well. Probably this one up here. And then I'm just going to hook things together as we go. Now, one thing worth noting is... Um, this is actually going to be a fairly high throughput system before too long. So, don't be afraid to use the built-in stamp tools. They can be quite handy. And they aren't too bad, apart from the fact they use wooden bridges. So, it's actually worth a look, if I'm going to be entirely honest. That said, if I wanted to save cost, I could do it. But the, the stamp tools just are really convenient. They aren't the best, they aren't perfect, but they do the job. Actually, I think that sums up really nicely. And I think I'll just install it... Um... Uh, yeah, I think there's good. There's good. Yeah. Just have to tear out the bridges and replace it. Just taking a few moments here, letting the uh, things keep on running. I've got slightly over ambitious with this because stations, bridges are kind of expensive. That's why I was also advocating like um, having simple cross-track connections is a good way to go about it to start out. But uh, we're almost there. Um, I went with a single drop-off station for the actual tools, tools works up here because you know I can always add another one if I need to. Thus, there's room for expansion anyway, and it doesn't need to export anything, which also helps. Um, this one's an import and exporter, which is why it's a bit more useful there. Uh, I've started a simple loop here, and oh geez, I'm already past a thousand resources. I had like a hundred when I hit stops, now we're at 1,300. <laughs> this line is doing its job. But yeah, for simplicity, because um, this place will produce some coal as well, it needs to have access to both directions. So it's a, it's a bit of a pain to try and sort it out if we're going to be entirely honest. So it's going to be a low throughput connection point. Like that. So the trains can actually enter it and leave it. Um, let's leave it like that, yeah. Trains can enter it and leave it as required in either direction. Yeah. Uh, might as well connect that there. This is not meant to do great things. <laughs> as you can probably tell from just how I'm building it. Oops, just that. That'll do. Then it needs... Trains are coming on in this circle route, so... It needs a way to get to the station, which is going to be like that. This is going to be slightly far away, actually. Hang on a sec. I need to put... This is why I was trying not to do custom work. <laughs> there we go. That's the ticket. It doesn't need to be a massive one here, because let's be honest, oops, this is, um, that's too much. This is just going to be need um, wood export, and then at the end of the day, it's also going to need some actual import. Wait, no, what am I talking about? This is a forest. It doesn't need import, as far as I know. So just flat out exporting materials. That's all this place will do. Stop. 
but this is also a case of me needing to overcompensate a little bit in terms of where I've, how t close things are. But at the same time, this is also not too bad overall. You know, we don't need um, the that three-way splitter there because just simply branching off as needed is all we needed for that. So this will be where we can get the trains in. This is also where we can get um, a depot in as well. And I've left myself no good way, to, no good place to put it. Um, actually, this is this will be a good spot. This will be a fairly good spot. He says as he starts slapping down rails. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, that'll do. That'll do. I feel sorry for any train trying to navigate it, but uh, this is not meant to be like high capacity anyway, as I mentioned. So, um, wagons. We can't get the wrong hoffers, so the studingers are going to have to do. Five, if I recall. Nope, six. Oh yeah, it's five for the, um, the other engine. But I've spent part of my initial wood on getting that then I'm going to tell it to um, the empty trains are coming sorry this this way is the way in this side here so I think ha avoiding having to turn and lose speed will be better for the heavier trains which will be the wood trains so they are going to go to station four um, I just need to order this stuff correctly Station tour. Actually, I don't need to tell it to unload. That's fine. That'll do for my train. So, that's going to be our first thingamajig. And hark, it goes through the signals. Ah. Bit of needless complexity never hurt anyone. Now, something I can do, I think, real quick, is I can put down a tree nursery, because it costs cash. And just use that to boost this forest up a bit. There we go. Trade. Do I want to spend money for... Ooh, yes, please. I need to get some more wood tokens because I... that will let me get more trains. And more trains means more stuff. Ideally, though, I want some lumber source connected to this. Because I think that one train may be good enough for now. There's another forest up this way, which is where I was going to for the tool works before I decided to do other things. So that'd be a good place to connect to. More importantly though, first delivery, and we do need to give it a, a little bit of a chance for the passenger line to catch back up. Very good. I also need to upgrade the passenger trains actually. Whoops. Uh, oh, I know why. Because I'm planning to install upgrades on this thing eventually, I built it as if it was like a 2, but it's a 1. So that was a slight slip on my part. Sorry. I'm human. I make mistakes. Sometimes. I know it's strange, believe it or not, but it does happen. But, uh, yeah. Apart from that, apart from me slipping up and doing something very simple, very wrong, like station out of range, it's easy to even think. This is actually off to a fairly good start. Now I just need to populate the place. As well as connect more sources. Shouldn't be too bad. He says, hopefully. That's our first lumber train going. Um, one thing I have done is I've also gone into the accept town down here on Station 4 and told it not to accept lumber. So... Ah, that's something, another thing I forgot to do, because I don't normally do that very much, if I'm going to be honest. But at least we got the trains rolling. And with that, we're going to have our own native supply of lumber. What's that? a deforestation over near Plymouth. Where's that? That is all the way down there. That was, that's one I was eyeing up. That's potentially one I could connect to with without too much hassle. But one thing we should probably try and do is um, maybe, yeah, 
let's grab this. Five to three tokens. Let's increase the efficiency on that just so that we get more stuff out of it. Um, one thing I would recommend is actually, if you get a really good sawmill, like one that produces two or three wood tokens for deliveries, consider not upgrading it because upgrading it will increase the throughput of logs to planks, but it won't increase the throughputs to wood tokens. So from a token point of view, it actually goes down in efficiency if you've got a really good sawmill. I just can't show you that here because this is like um, a very poor example of only producing one. But um, three into one for tokens. And that'll become five into one if I put a storage in or four into one if I put a quarter. So it's like, um, don't do that. Also, toy shop. If you get a good passenger line, you don't need to be converting lumber into cash. So that's all okay. Also, that is not good enough. I need another engine for that. There we go. Train 10 is rolling out. It'll get in the way slightly, but that's the nature of this junction here. But more importantly, though, we are getting lumber. Our own lum native lumber. It's halfway through 1924, which is where I'm going to stop it here. We have two and a half thousand in the bank. We have a we have lumber supply. We have a single passenger line rolling, and things are looking good. This is the end of part one. However, this is as far as I go. So, one thing I did mention to Dammit is I do play slightly faster than him. Like, um, as in I have the game speeds set higher usually. I tend to do that. And his part one actually ends in 1920, just at the start of 1922. So, yeah, I've condensed like a couple of extra years into this, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So comparing just by episode number, not the best thing if you're actually checking out both series. But yes. Actually, I've got 100. That's the 14, and that's the... Um, 13 up here. Let's go ahead and install a restaurant. Extra capacity and extra income. Extra income is what I'm interested in here. So there we go. More income. Sure, I spent 100 lumber on it, but I'll get that back before too long. But with that, yes, it is time to end. So, this has been Iron Mark 3. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the show and this uh, little return to Mashinki. It certainly has been a while, hasn't it? Ooh, I need another... Well, actually, to be honest, you usually do need a bunch of lumber trains rolling around as well. Off you go. Another reason why I split them. Because um, these stations can get pretty busy pretty quick if you're not careful. But yeah. Um, right, I interrupted my own outro again. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps out me, helps out the channel, and gives me those virtual headpats I oh so crave. And I'll see you all later. To be honest, it feels nice recording Machine Key again. Oh, look at that. A passenger train with low passengers. Hmm. Maybe I put a, a train too many on there? I think I might have. <laughs>